Okay, we're going to be talking about uh, describing location with what I term two-way verbs. Um, this presentation is going to give a quick overview of two-way verbs, and we'll see that they can take either an accusative or dative uh, object, depending upon whether they express, like two-way prepositions, uh, location or movement. Um, since they're similar to two-way prepositions, I'm going to give a quick overview, a quick review of those, or at least the concept behind two-way prepositions, before we end the presentation with an example of uh, describing location with, uh, with a two-way verb. So there are two there are two kinds of two-way verbs, and this is a quick overview. Uh, we'll see that they're accusative and dative forms. Now, the accusative forms, hängen, legen, setzen, stecken, und stellen, um, they will, basically, as we'll see, they'll describe um, movement. Hängen is to hang, legen is to lay, setzen is to place, uh, stecken is to stick into something, and stellen means to place, but sort of like you would uh, place a cup, something that stands in a uh, vertical position. Now, you look on the dative column, and some of them remain the same. Hängen uh, remains the same, and stecken also remains the same. However, we see that legen, setzen, and stellen change in the dative. That, so something you don't you don't lay it it lies uh you don't set it it sits you don't place it it stands so liegen sitzen and stehen are the dative forms of the of the accusative two-way verbs so they're sort of like partners uh you know one you have to know the other because it depends on whether you're moving something or if describing something that is uh uh, in the location, a position. So this one we're going to look specifically at, in this presentation, we're going to look specifically at uh, two-way verbs in the dative. Hängen, liegen, sitzen, stecken, and stehen. So hängen is to be hanging on a uh, vertical surface. Liegen is to be laying on a horizontal surface, or actually lying on a horizontal surface. Uh, sitzen is to be sitting. A, in a chair, on, on a bank, uh, on, a, on a bench, uh, on the ground. Stecken is to stick something, to insert, to place something into something. So you, you place it into the drawer, for instance. You put it into your pocket. And stehen is to be standing, sort of. Uh, people stand, but also uh, vases stand, statues stand, uh, books, if you don't lay them, don't lay them down. They stand. Um, so anything that sort of stands on its own in a uh, vertical position. Now, let's quickly review the concept of two-way prepositions. I'm not going to go over the individual prepositions, but I want to get the concept down. Uh, remember from our prior discussion of two-way prepositions, we talked about Frau Schmidt. Uh, Frau Schmidt, uh, the first question is, uh, asks the question, wohin geht Frau Schmidt? So where is she going? Wohin indicates some type of motion away from the speaker. Uh, so we're actually, in this sentence, very concerned with the concept of motion. We don't care where she's at at the moment. We don't want to know where she is going. And the answer is, sie geht in die Bäckerei. Now, you recall, uh, from our discussion on two-way prepositions that whenever she goes into the bakery or she goes somewhere, uh, any time of movement is involved, uh, if I use a two-way preposition to express that movement, I'm going to uh, use it in the accusative case. That is, the object of that preposition will be in the accusative form. So it's die Bäckerei, sie geht in die Bäckerei, it still retains the accusative because it indicates motion. Now, that same type of concept is going to be used with the, uh, with what we, the, these, these verbs. Um, oh, I'm sorry, before I get to that, uh, you'll recall also, wo ist Frau Schmidt? Position, I, I don't care where she's going, I want to know where she is at. I answer with the dative. Still use the same two-way preposition in, but this time I respond with the data form, in der Bäckerei. 
uh, she's located in the bakery. So the same type of concept is going to be used with the uh, with these two-way verbs. Now, whenever I talk about placement, position, um, and I use a two-way verb, hängen, liegen, sitzen, stecken, or stehen, and I use it in conjunction with one of those two-way prepositions, an, auf, hinter, im, neben, über, unter, vor, and zwischen, um, anytime that happens, I'm going to automatically use the dative. Because recall, I'm not concerned about uh, direction or motion or, or, or movement away from. I, I'm, inst I'm interested in position. So anytime in German I talk about position and I use a two-way preposition and I use a verb, one of those two-way verbs that we looked at that you see on your screen, I'm going to use it in dative. So for instance, returning to Frau Schmidt, wo sitzt Frau Schmidt? So the verb there, sitzen, you'll recall is one of those two-way verbs that we're talking about. Now you'll also recall that it could take either an accusative or, or dative depending upon whether I'm talking about uh, uh, motion or position. Now sitzen by itself indicates position. She's not setting herself down, she's sitting uh, on a chair or in this example, auf der Bank, on a bench. So since by itself, by default, the verb suggests position, I'm automatically going to use the dative case. Sie sitzt auf der Bank. It should be die Bank. Die Bank is the nominative form, feminine, but die goes to dative because I have a two-way verb, sitzen, that ought, and a two-way preposition, auf, describing location. So uh, two-way verbs.